Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we are going to be doing is making our bash shell absolutely beautiful. Uh, basically, this right here, I'm going to show you how to add that. Uh, I've done a couple other videos going over how to beautify your terminal, and I'll be talking about those throughout the video, but the primary focus of this is going to be to apply this effect right here. And we're actually going to be doing this with a uh, script, so it's going to be fairly easy to do and fairly easy to customize as well. Now, before we actually do anything at all, what I'm going to do is show you how to simply back up your bash RC file. It's this file right here in your home directory. And we are going to be backing this up because the uh, script that we're going to be using is going to uh, write into it or overwrite it. So we just want a backup just in case if you need to uh, replace it with the original. And doing that is pretty simple. Uh, in your home directory, just do a CP4 copy paste and then type in bash RC. Oh, sorry, it's a dot bash RC, just like so. And then we're going to replace this or uh, copy or paste this as a bash RC dot backup. That's not essential, but I do recommend you do that. So now if I go ahead and list this out, you will see the uh, bash RC backup file there. Now this is my primary uh, desktop machine right here. And you do notice I already have this set up. So to show you the initial setup and configuration, I'm actually going to jump into VirtualBox and uh, show you so I can show you the initial setup process. So here we are. We're going to be doing this in elementary OS. The distribution doesn't really matter. This is supported for any Debian or Arch based system. And the specific shell or the specific script we're going to be using is this right here, the synth shell script. If we go down here, you could go ahead and read all about it. There's actually a couple different scripts that are included in this. But the only thing we're going to be focusing on in this video is the fancy bash prompt. Uh, they have one that's a, a system status report that will open up when you open up your uh, terminal application. Uh, but I really do prefer NeoFetch. And at the end of this video, I'll actually show you guys how to make NeoFetch automatically launch. Just as a little bonus of this video, they uh, additionally, they have better LS included in this. And I would recommend you check out LSD. I have a separate video on that as well. And then they have a couple others such as aliases and history. But we're only going to be installing the fa fancy bash prompt. And doing this is pretty simple. You just run these commands right here. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and make sure we have the power line fonts as the dependency. So let's go ahead and copy this command right here. Go over to our applications and open up our terminal. And then we're going to go ahead and just paste in this command the sudo apt install fonts powerline. If you're running Arch, it's just pacman s powerline fonts. Go ahead and hit enter, type in your password, and you can see that it went ahead and, and installed it. I did not have it. And now we're just gonna go ahead and copy over some of these commands. So we're gonna do the git clone command to get this uh, synth shell. I'm gonna be doing this in my home directory. So go ahead and paste that in. And it looks like elementary OS doesn't include Git out of the gate. So you probably already have Git, but if you don't already, you're going to need to go ahead and install it. So sudo apt install Git, go ahead and proceed. There we go. So now we should be able to Git clone this. There we go. And while it does that, let's go ahead and change the permission of this setup sh to executable. So you just go ahead and paste that in there. And now we are going to cd into the directory that this was downloaded into and then go ahead and run the uh, setup.sh script. So paste that in there. And now it's going to ask you what you would like to do. So would you like to install or uninstall? Default is I, so I'm going to go ahead and install it. Would you like to install this for the current user only or system wide? I'm going to go current user. So the default is you, so enter. Now would you like to install the greeter? I'm going to say no. Uh, would you like to install the shell prompt? I'm going to go uh, Y for yes. Would you like to install better LS uh, for me? No alias, no history, no. So now we have it properly installed. And actually, if I go ahead and close out this terminal and reopen it, we should see the effect. So here it is. It's already looking way better. And if you like how it looks, the color schemes and all that right from default, you could go ahead and leave it as that. But customizing this is actually pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and uh, change directory back into our uh, home directory. And let's do ls-a so we can see everything. And the uh, configuration files for this is going to be located in your uh, .config folder. 
If you go ahead and open up your bash RC, it's just a, um, actually I'll show you real quick. So if you go nano dot bash RC, uh, you can see that it's just a script that will pull the um, data or the configuration data for the colors and all that from that dot uh, config folder. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that CD into our dot config folder LS. And then you see here we have the synth shell. So let's CD into there. And if we go ls again, you can see some of the configuration folders that we got. So we have the synth shell prompt config. This is the main thing we're gonna to want to be working in. Then you have the default and you have the root config and then the actual prompt here. So if you do want to go ahead and check out the script, you can open that up, but the actual configuration is gonna be in that um, uh, dot config folder. So to edit it, we're just gonna go nano, do synth shell prompt dot config hit enter and this is your actual configuration here. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for, actually, I'm gonna keep this open because one thing we're gonna to want to do is go ahead and get some color codes because you're gonna to want to change the colors around, of course. So here in this little note area, it gives you a lot of information on what is actually going on. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so you all can see it a bit better. So here under colors, you can see the uh, color scheme and format of the bash prompt and it's divided into segments. First, the user, the host, uh, PWD means the current working directory. And then these three, you probably won't see as much, but you can customize how it looks for the uh, Git, uh, Python virtual environments, as well as the uh, Terraform workspaces. And then the input is gonna be the uh, user input of what you're actually inputting. Now your color options, it has a, the word-based color options, but I noticed some of them didn't work too well. So I would stick with using the uh, five 256-bit uh, colors. If you go ahead and open up your web browser and you just uh, Google search 256-bit colors, it will bring up a, a pretty good chart so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, this is a cheat sheet here on GitHub. I'll go ahead and link you all to this. And you can see the color codes here. So these are the color codes that you can actually use within your terminal. So if I go ahead and go back over here, you can see the uh, sections that it broke down right here. So you see the format, user host, uh, PWD. And right here we have the user host PWD. And you see the colors, we have white, blue, bold for the uh, text effect. So let's go ahead, right click and open our terminal in a new window so we can go ahead and see what's going on. So we have blue, blue, and white. And let's say I wanted to make this like dark orange, light orange, and keep this the same. So all I would do is go over to the first one, which is the uh, user, and we want this to be a orange. So let's go over to our web browser, search for orange, and okay, so here's one orange, that's an ugly orange. So there's a darker one, we have dark orange three. So let's go ahead and go with dark orange three. The code for that is 130. So all I would do is go to the background user color right here, and I would change this to 130. Now let's go ahead and try to find a lighter orange if it is available. So orange red, dark orange, orange one. So this looks pretty good. So let's go 214 for the uh, get rid of this and I believe it was uh, 214, so 214. And then for now, we're gonna go ahead and just leave these the same. If I go Control O, and hit Enter to save it, then I can go ahead and open up a new window, and then you can see the colors have changed. I have the uh, dark orange here, light orange, and that is just the very start of the configuration of this. Uh, you can see on here, it doesn't look too good. It's probably because of this terminal application. This is just the elementary OS default terminal app. So you might actually end up wanting to change the uh, character right here that it's using. You could completely get rid of this altogether and you can add spacing and all that in between this. So if I actually go down to the behavior here, you can see the separator character. You could go ahead and change that if you'd like to and you could see the default is the triangle. And then you have the separator padding. So you don't put a number in here. If you want to add padding, you just add the uh, space character. So let's go like three spaces three spaces, and if I go control O, enter, and then go ahead and open up another terminal window, I can see the changes, and you can see that there are spaces now in between that character. So there really is a lot that you could do with that, and that's really the extent of the uh, customization. Um, you can add different characters like you saw, you can add padding, there's other options such as horizontal, final padding, and all that. 
So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to quickly show you how to make NeoFetch launch and then we're going to go back onto my primary desktop. I'm going to show you my configuration for my setup and then that will be about it. So making NeoFetch launch, I covered this in my actual separate NeoFetch video and if you're looking into figuring out how to completely customize NeoFetch, you can go ahead and check out that video. But what we're going to do is go ahead and save this, exit out. And then let's cd into our home directory because to do this you're going to want to actually edit your bash rc file so to do that you just go nano bash rc oops sorry it's dot bash rc open that up and this bash rc file is essentially running commands when you first open up the terminal so at the very bottom of this bash rc page what i'm going to do is simply type in uh, neofetch just like that Control o enter exit out and now you saw when I opened up these terminals, it didn't really do too much. So now if I go ahead and open up the terminal, we have NeoFetch and now we have our customized little bash RC script or the uh, pretty bash prompt thing right here, which I know is a very desirable uh, little tweak that a lot of you guys were asking about. So let's jump back over to my uh, primary machine and show you guys how I have it set up for myself. So here is my machine and personally I think I have it looking really good. I really like the uh, kind of purple scheming of the Endeavor OS stuff. Uh, I had Arco Linux installed but I went ahead and just threw Endeavor OS because I was running into some slight issues but uh, I kind of figured out what they were and it wasn't even... Uh, Actually, it was Arctic Linux, and it wasn't even the fault of Arctic Linux, it was my own fault, but Endeavor OS is beautiful, so we're rocking it. So my setup. So this is my configuration. I just have, uh, like, white on purple, and then white on the light purple. That's what I was talking about earlier, about how some of these didn't work, so I just used 140 for the uh, light purple code. Everything's bolded. Um, I think it was this one right here. I went ahead and switched it out. So it would be the uh, dark gray and white texts were switched. And then over here for the actual input, I went ahead and used 159. So it's the very, very light like cyan color. And then down here, I don't really have any extra configuration. And then this is the Git section. So if you do work in Git a lot, you could customize how everything looks there. So in addition to this little thing that we just did to make this a little bit prettier, I would recommend go into your actual terminal settings and truly play around with everything you possibly can to get the exact look that you want. The more you customize the terminal and the better you make it look, the more time you're probably going to spend with it and really learn what the, well, the power of what using the uh, terminal can do in your Linux system. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please comment, rate, subscribe. And if you go ahead and click the I up in the top corner, you will see links to the uh, uh, LSD video and the uh, NeoFetch video if you would like to uh, dive further into customization. So again, please subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. I hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye.